simple matter. God has it already figured out. He declares the end while he stands at the beginning. And so, every situation that you are going through, it is not an end. It is just a bend. The fact that you can't see the bend does not mean it is the end. Back in the days when I was going to school, they took me to some science classes and they introduced something to me called a microscope. A microscope to the scientists is something that you use to magnify something. If you want to see the leg of a mosquito to be like the stem of a mugumo tree, put it under a microscope. If you want to see a bacteria to be the size of an elephant, put it under a microscope. And in the spiritual realm, we have been given a microscope. The microscope that we have, we put it between our eyes and our situation. What you see from the lens of the microscope will determine your next move. And so, the microscope that God has given to us is called faith. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so what you need to do, since you can't see clearly, you don't know tomorrow, you don't know next year, you don't know 10 years to come. What you can do is pull the future and put it under the microscope. The moment it comes under the microscope, it begins to become visible. On Wednesday here, our brother walked us through a scripture that I love so much. And thanks, brother Charles, for opening our eyes on that scripture. The Bible says that Abraham took Isaac without telling his wife, Sarah. And he said, we are going to the mountain to worship. When they reached at a certain point, he told the servants, stay here with the donkey. I and the boy are going to the mountain and we shall be back. We shall be back. The journey was a journey of three days. And so Isaac is saying, Father, we have the fire. We have the wood. But where is the lamb of sacrifice? And the father said, God will provide himself a lamb of sacrifice. He said, stay here. We will be back. I have everything that I need, but I have no lamb of sacrifice. And Abraham knew too well what God had told him. Bring me your son and put him on the altars for me. He reasoned with God. Hebrews eleven nineteen says that he reasoned with God on his way. And reasoning is putting facts on the table. Weighing the pros and the cons. The advantages and the disadvantages. And coming up with a conclusion. And so Abraham reasoned. And he said this. That even if Isaac is dead. I know that this God has the power to 
raised the dead. And so he was not afraid to slaughter the son. Because he knew that even in death there is life. God is a God of all possibilities. And when he went to the mountain and he put his son on the altars of God, the Bible says that the voice came and said, Abraham, do not hurt your son. Look up there. There is a lamb of sacrifice. I came to tell somebody this morning that go to the mountain. Every time you go to the mountain, you go with a substance. When you come from the mountain, you come with evidence. When you go to the mountain, you go with a need. When you come from the mountain, you come with a solution. When you go to the mountain, you go with tears. When you come from the mountain, you come with joy. You have a new song. You can dance. You can testify. And I want to tell you, child of God, that become a person who is not afraid to put the microscope under the eye. Because then you start to see things as Christ sees them. The only eyes that we have are the eyes of faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. You and I are called into a life of faith. Jesus one time had a friend. His name was Lazarus. And Lazarus fell sick. And Lazarus died. While he was sick, the sisters sent for Jesus. Jesus did not come. The man died. Jesus did not come. They buried the man. Jesus still did not come. While he was in the mission, he knew that Lazarus is already dead. But I want to tell you, it is still a simple matter in the eyes of God. And so Jesus tells his disciples, that we need to go back to Judea because our friend Lazarus is asleep. And one of those disciples, I think, was George Coco. He asked, if he is sleeping, why bother? He will wake up. Then Jesus said, he is dead. Even the simple things that God reveals are still complicated to us. He can make it so simple, but still the simplicity of God is still complexity to man. He said this man is asleep. They could not connect the sleep and death until Jesus had to tell them exactly in a language that they can understand. Then they knew it is a serious matter. But in the eyes of the Lord, it was simple. He said, this is not, this is not unto death. It is for the glory. Remember on the other side, people are mourning. On the other side, people are planning. On the other side, there are expenses. On the other side, there are bills to be paid. On the other side, there are cars being repossessed and their homes being taken away. On the other side, things are not working, but he still says it is a simple matter. Yeah. And when he walks to Bethany, Mary and Martha meets him and says, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Are you the kind of a person who thinks God can only rescue what is on the surface? Do you think he can only deal with it when you are still seeing it? I am here to tell you that even when it is decaying, even when it is rotting, even when everybody has given up, 
and nobody wants to come close, God is still able to get into that situation. God is still able to come to your rescue. And he walked in and he asked them, where have you laid? Mother said, he's been there for days. You don't want to go close to him. Said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me. Actually, he says, He who lives believing. Yes. He who lives believing shall never die. Living believing. That is the life that you and I are called to. Living, believing. He who lives and believes in me shall never die. And so he says, I am the resurrection. To everyone else, Lazarus was dead and stinking. What they did not know is that Lazarus was not dead he was living in christ and so when he died when jesus is on the other side he did not go to the grave he went to jesus he was connected to jesus and when he came to the funeral scene he was not coming for the dead he was coming for the living he was coming for the living he knew that Lazarus has not died. I don't know what your situation is. And I don't know what the circumstances of your life might be. But I came to tell you, it is a simple matter. It's a very simple matter. Is it a marriage? It is a simple matter. Is it finances? Simple matter. Are they papers? Simple matter. You want to get married? Simple matter. You want to buy a home? Simple matter. You want to go to school? Simple matter. You want to get to ministry? Simple matter. We want to buy a church? Simple matter. In the eyes of the Lord. The long scriptures that we have read is about the nation of Israel. And Israel had one of their servants called Moabites. During the time of King David, David brought the northern and the southern kingdoms together. And as a bonus, God gave them Edom and Moab. So Moab and Edom were servants of Israel and Judah. During the reign of King Ahab, there was a treaty between the Moabites and Israel. That the Moabites are going to pay a hundred thousand lives every year as tax. And they are also going to shear their rams and bring a hundred thousand wolves every year. When Ahab died, Moabites repelled. They said, we are not paying anymore. The treaty died with Ahab, so we are free. Remember King Ahaziah? The one who fell from his own balcony and died. This is his brother called Jeroham. When Jeroham became king, he said, no, they cannot run away from this. We have to go get it back. And so they decided to come together, three kings, to go and defeat Moab. Scripture says that when they ganged together, they said, which path should we take? How are we going to fight these people? And they decided to take the path of the wilderness. Somebody in a wilderness, somebody in a wilderness, they decided to take the path of the wilderness. And in this path of wilderness, seven days into the wilderness, they ran out of water. Horses cannot fight when they are thirsty. You probably need a donkey or a camel, but a horse cannot do it. So they knew for sure. Remember King, King, King Jehoshaphat saying, I am as you are. My people as your people. And my horses as your horses. These guys were psyched up. 
they were ready to go and show Moab that they are the men of God. The Bible says seven days in the wilderness, all the equipment they had could not function. Everything that they banked on could not work. You think when you graduate from college, it's going to be well. There is a bend you don't see. When you get married, it's going to be well. There is a bend you don't see. When you came to United States, you thought it was going to be well. You have experienced that there is a bend you did not see. These people, there's something they did not see. You cannot fight with the horses a battle that belongs to God. Scripture says that horses are prepared for the battle, but victory, victory, I don't know what you are looking for, but for me, I'd rather skip the horses and go straight to the victory than prepare the horses without consulting God, get into the wilderness and fail. So, when they realized that this is not going to work, wisdom is a good thing. The fear of God is a good thing. The spirit of God is a good thing. And I want to thank God for those people who are always spending time trying to find the wisdom of God in their lives. These guys were in a company of someone called Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat was a God-fearing king. When this king said, God brought us all here just to finish us, he said, is there no prophet? Is there no prophet around here? You need a prophet around you. You need somebody to speak to you the word of God. You need somebody to figure out the will of God about your life. And I want to thank God for people who know that their victory belongs to God. This man, when he found out that there is a prophet, he said, let's go to him. And when they went to Elisha, Elisha first of all rebuked the king of Israel. Because this king was halfway. Uh -huh. Scripture says he destroyed the idols of Baal. But there are certain things that he kept. In other words, he was not as bad as Ahab and Jezebel. But also he was not as good as Jeho Jehoshaphat. There are things that he kept to himself. You know, I can, there are people who can smoke out there. And it is okay because they don't belong here. They can still do it. But then there are those who can do it in church as well. There are people who can sin out there and it's fine. There are people of Baal, they are known. But there are those also who want to do it while still in church. I don't want to be as bad as they are. But again, I don't want to be so much in church. I don't want them to know me too well. There is a hippa. They should not know me too much. I want to keep my privacy. I want to keep certain things. Am I speaking to somebody? The 11 7 people. When it is 11 7 shift, please go for 11 7 shift. Don't create a shift that does not exist. When you are called to go to work, go to work. When there is no shift, stay home. Don't bring a neighbor in the house. Don't be not too much like this, but also not too much like this. The Bible says that you choose to be hot or you choose to be cold. You cannot stay lukewarm. You cannot stay lukewarm and serve God. You cannot stay lukewarm and be in church. At some point, by the way, the devil is no man's friend. At some point, truth. So take your position. Take your place. And that is what this king did. He didn't want to destroy so much, but also he didn't want to be so much into the things of God. But thank God for Jehoshaphat because he knew victory comes from God. Is there no prophet? And when the prophet was 
found. He went before God. And the Bible says, when the word of the Lord came, it came this way. This is a simple matter in the eyes of the Lord. And that is the message that I have for you. Your situation is a simple matter in the eyes of the Lord. What happened? They were told to dig ditches. And the Lord said, you will not see wind and you will not see rain. You will not see wind and you will not see rain. And I know where you are. You're waiting for the wind. And you're waiting for the cloud. And you're waiting to see something with your own eyes. You want to see yourself getting there. But the Lord says, he's not going to show you how to get there. All 